to the first international harp therapy convention. It was very exciting. There was a lot of people from different backgrounds, professors and psychologists that had mastered the art of playing the harp and had actually uh, participated in healing a lot of individuals. It was a lot of excitement there. Um, we learned a lot and even got to test out some of the equipment. So take a look. Hi, I'm Melody Morgan. And do you remember the, one of the previous shows that I had done, we'd actually met with a Reiki master, which is a form of alternative healing. Well, there was something that was very surprising to me. It's actually a form of healing that deals with harps. I'm actually in Richmond, Virginia right now with Sarah Jane Williams. And she is a harp healer, or rather, she does harp therapy. She's one of the first pioneers, or actually the pioneer, I believe, um, in this new field of healing and therapy. And we're going to get more insight as to how it all started, what her story is, and what there is to be offered. So, so Sarah Jane, exactly how did you get started in playing the harp, um, even previous to actually harp and healing? Well, I actually hold it. Um, I started playing the harp later in life. I played piano as a child and always longed to play the harp, and um, I really had this calling. And I was a nurse and a, became a psychologist. And during that time, I studied music privately and and got into playing the harp while I was a nurse. And decided I wanted to pull all my interests together. And they just started coalescing. And um, eventually, I worked in a pain center and started using it in conjunction with the uh, therapeutic models I was using. Um, around what time was it? Um, and what was going on in medicine at that particular time where the form of healing of, you know, the harp really came into play to another level? I mean, as we all know that the harp has always been looked on as an angelic way and a um, very positive thing, but how did it really start coming together, kind of more so in the medical um, capacity and in the pain centers? What year was that and how did that get started really? I started working uh, with the harp in 1991. Uh, there were some other people who were using uh, the harp in uh, more progressive movements, uh, for instance, going into the hospitals, playing in hospitals, hospitals, hospice units, excuse me. And um, so that activity began. And then uh, it all started coming together in the early 90s. How have people responded to it? very favorably. Uh, because people have this ancient um, heritage of the harp as a healing instrument, they're very open to looking at it as something that's very, very therapeutic. And uh, just looking at the instrument is uh, uh, an ecstatic experience, too. It's art in, uh, in a real physical form. It's music in form. Because the harmonic curve on the harp is based on sacred geometry, so when you look at it, you're inspired in a different way, visually. Wonderful. Well, what we'd like to do now is actually have you play something for us. Um, this is actually a harp that's going to be hooked up to a bed, correct? Mm -hmm. And then, um, actually, you could kind of explain it and set it up um, when you play the piece and shows exactly how the healing comes into play through the vibrations or the sound of the harp um, in connection with the bed. This is Michelle Sell and she's receiving vibroacoustic harp therapy. Thank you. 
Michelle, how are you feeling? Very relaxed. Okay. Um, Michelle just received some bioacoustic harp therapy. Uh, when I use this in my practice, I often use it as an adjunct to biofeedback and relaxation training. Uh, but basically, we're focusing on body awareness. And when I pluck specific strings, the different notes vibrate in different regions of the body. So, for instance, I'm going to pluck a C string, and I'd like you to tell me where you feel this in your body, Michelle. And I'll play a B. My mid back. Okay. That's my mid back too. Okay. Great. So this gives you a little example, but I can work throughout the uh, these two octaves um, and the lower part of the harp because those octaves really resonate with body tissue. The upper octaves work just as well, but it seems to work in more of a stimulating fashion uh, and works in more of the periphery of the body. So um, a lot of my clients find this to be extremely relaxing, and it's as if you're dropping a pebble into a pool of water, and the whole energy field of the body opens up, and the whole body seems to relax and release tension. If you think of the harp string as a metaphor for the muscles of the body, when you pluck a string, you're putting tension on it, and as you release it, you're releasing the tension, so the body is resonating with that whole process, and uh, you have the same sort of response. Well, thank you very much, Sarah Jane, and that was the demonstration. Hi, and we're back with Michelle Sell. As you saw, um, she was lying on the table, and it looked like she was really, really feeling the therapy. Um, she looks very relaxed. I could feel her energy. Actually, Michelle, how did you get started in all of this? Well, I met Sarah Jane Williams at a conference, and through Sarah Jane, I ended up meeting the man that invented the table and all the equipment. and. I had a treatment from a, a woman in Arkansas who was a music therapist because I'd had a serious eye injury. I had a, a bungee cord had flown off of a, a, a gate that I had it affixed to and it hit my left eye and almost blinded me. I mean, I almost lost my eye. And for a period of three months after the injury, the eye was still dilated and um, not really tracking very well. The muscles weren't working right. And I went to the music therapist, um, Mary Scoville, who's in Arkansas, to actually work with her and have her mentor me in the technique that she uses. And um, after she trained me for one day, she put me on her table that is like this and uh, gave me a 20-minute treatment. And when I got off the table, my eye was dilated similar to the right eye. It was the f basically the first time it had been healthy since the injury. So it was pretty amazing to me. Yes, that's amazing how there's so many forms of healing, you know, that have been around for centuries, and um, they tend to do a lot better job than certain, I guess, Western or uh, what people consider typical medicines nowadays. Not that we should completely abandon Western medicine, but um, definitely the combination of it, I think, is uh, very powerful. So, as well, you do play the you do play the harp as well, correct? Yes, I've been a professional harpist for about 20 years in the San Francisco area. 
Well, I thought that was an incredible testimony. Um, I would love to hear something that, what, one of your favorite pieces. I'll play part of a composition that I wrote for my first album called Circle Around the Moon. As you can see, this is very, very relaxing and sensual. It's also very healing. I definitely recommend everybody getting a chance to try this out. What I'm going to do actually is lay back and listen to Michelle play a little bit longer. Join in next month for our next episode on Eyes. I'm Ken Fuller, and I'm, and I'm also here at the first International Harp Therapy Conference in Richmond, Virginia. And we're having such a ball here, Melody and I. Uh, we've been around to some of the exhibits and seen some of the uh, extraordinary harp playing that's going on here, and really everyone should have been here. Right now I'm sitting here with Professor Gloria Galante, producer, extraordinaire, and also harpist. Hi, Gloria. Hi, Ken. How are you today? I'm great. Mm -hmm. I'm great. I'm enjoying all of the, the therapeutic harping that's going on. Great. Uh, it was a pleasure to meet some of your harp mates, I guess. And uh, I'm really interested in, in, in your background and how you got started and what you do now, uh, as well as some of the projects that you have uh, produced. Maybe you could tell us some of those things. Certainly. Uh, well, originally I played piano at age five, and then going through the years studying piano first, then I um, came to high school where they did not use the piano in the orchestra. So the teacher said to me, well, you'll have to choose an orchestral instrument, which I didn't have much of an education as far as music, only piano, guitar, or the church organ. So she said, well, our choices that are available would be trombone, tuba, or the harp. So because of my piano background, I was lucky enough to get the harp. How is the, is the harp related to the piano in any way? Absolutely. Um, it's really wonderful to know the music notation and all of the elements of theory, melody, harmony, rhythm before you come to the harp because the harp is technically a very difficult instrument, let alone to tune and to carry. So it's good to have the knowledge of piano first, and it will make the harp just a bit easier. Also notice, like drummers, they have to move both hands and both feet at the same time, pretty much. Is the harp in any way similar to that? Absolutely. Um, well, the drums, it's pretty tough, because I also played percussion um, and studied all of the you know, drums and the percussion instruments. But the harp, the pedal harp, there's two kinds of harps, a Celtic harp and a pedal harp. 
And the pedal harp has seven pedals, which four are on the right side and three on the left. And so you use your feet to play the pedals, which each of the pedals presets the key signatures or creates the tension of your sharps and naturals and flats in your feet. And then your hands play on the strings, which there are 47 strings. And the harp also incorporates 37 effects. Wow. I've learned something myself being a musician. I didn't know that. Uh, how long have you been playing the harp, actually? And uh, roughly 25 years been playing the harp. And you also teach, w uh, and where? Um, I'm a professor at Westchester University in Pennsylvania. And currently, I've been there 10 years on staff. And when I originally started, I came in for one harp student. And now we have a program and a harp festival and a harp ensemble, which is really wonderful. So what are some of the projects that's going on here or some of the uh, classes or exhibits, I guess? Maybe you could perhaps tell us a little bit about that that's going on at, the, uh, at this particular uh, conference. Well, there's so many to choose from. It's just such a well-planned out conference. Um, actually, it's history in the making. Uh, just a little sampling that you saw today, there were classes on the vibroacoustic therapy and um, scientific explanations of sound elements, mm -hmm. as well as there's harp lessons even going on. You're able to sign up actually for actual harp lessons. I think Melody did. Yeah. She went down the hall just a few <laughs> minutes ago to sign up for harp therapy lessons. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, to play the harp. Um, I think there are some lessons on playing the harp, but many of the people that are coming to the table today and this weekend, it's about sharing what their niche is in this new emerging field. Okay. I know that, uh, of course I know, but tell, some, uh, tell all of our viewers a little bit about your projects and what you've done uh, as far as recording, producing, and whatnot. Uh, my husband and I, we have a studio which is called GMG Studios. And originally we thought we we're so blessed to have this kind of facility that we wanted to somehow get this harp music from all of the pioneers out into the planet. So we decided, well, um, Sarah Jane Williams and myself will produce a healing harp CD, basically a harp therapy CD. And we have roughly about 17 of the pioneers, some of the pioneers, because there's really a lot more mm -hmm. than 17, but um, of the uh, pioneers that are doing this work, um, playing as people receive chemo treatments, or doing the vibroacoustic table, or teaching um, people to play the harp with symptoms like lupus, or um, just anything, uh, playing for deliveries, birthings. Yeah. Um, it actually, it's not a painkiller, but it sure makes the medicine go down a lot easier. Okay. Now, the harp isn't traditionally considered a jazz instrument, but however, when applied to jazz, it just, it just changes the flavor, brings out a sound that you just don't hear in most jazz ensembles. How did you start to incorporate that? Uh, into the jazz sound, the harp instrument? Um, well, originally playing the piano, I had a wonderful uh, piano teacher that really wanted me to learn the classics. However, as a child, I was very interested in people like Fats Waller and Scott Joplin. And so our deal was if I would learn one Mozart piece, she would give me a piece of my choice. And so there, I really learned a little bit of you know, the blues and the ragtimes and things like that uh, on the piano. And then later, I just incorporated that on the harp, and it's just growing uh, with my group, Kusangala, featuring um, the bass player of the Max Roach Quartet, Tyrone Brown, and Duke Wilson on percussion, Jim Miller on drums, and Rosella Clemens Washington on vocals. Wow. Jazz harpers. I think Melanie's going to take some lessons and probably come back and do some hip hop harp. <laughs> That'd be different. <laughs> and it's available. Just like this CD, Music for the Soul, we have um, at GMG Studios a little web store that has all kinds of different um, 
music that we record at our studio. We may but have a hip hop CD on don't, there don't, too. Don't tell me there's a hip hop <laughs> harp you CD. Never know, you never know. This CD that you have in your hand, a music for the soul, a collection of therapeutic harp music. It's you could clean your house to this, your car, you could soak in the uh, tub, hot tub, you could cook, you could entertain, you could make love, you could shop to this. You wanna hear something really interesting? I did a sharing list from just all the people that are on here, the pioneers of the uh, harp therapy, and everyone picked a different place to where they would donate a CD you know, just to have it played or shared with someone. And one that really touched my heart was that a woman who received surgery woke up to this music. And I thought that was pretty powerful. That's fantastic. As I said, it's a pleasure to be here uh, at the HARP conference here in Richmond. Uh, Melody covered the, I guess, the therapeutic connection between the HARP and new age medicine, if you want to call it that. And Gloria added a lot of the background music that we heard earlier, and she's also going to play again for us. So stick around. You sure can. Okay. A lot of times people will call and wonder where to get obscure music such as this. Okay. And we do have a website, www.com, actually, dot uh, gmgstudios.com. Okay. Okay. And we'll put that on at the end of the show as well. For those of you who maybe have missed that, we'll make sure you get that information. So now I'm going to sit back. I won't get on the table. I'm just going to sit back and cross my legs and listen to a little heart music by Gloria Galante. Gloria, thank you. It was a pleasure. It was worth the trip, and uh, I can't wait. Thank you. I've had the chance to meet so many wonderful people here at the HARP conference. Uh, I was very fortunate to be here with the director of the conference, and her name is Linnell Kortzire. I hope I pronounced that right. Kortzire, you're really close. Okay. <laughs> and she's, she is actually the uh, director and coordinator of this whole event that's going on here in Richmond. Uh, I guess I want to ask you for some background and, and tell us how you got involved and what the, the conference is about. I know that uh, Gloria, she explained some of the things, but I know you have a, a few things you'd like to mention as well. So I'll let you tell everybody about yourself. Well, I really felt like this conference was ready to happen. There have been many people doing harp therapy in lots of different pockets all over the United States, mm -hmm throughout Canada, throughout the world, and uh, really pioneering many different types of harp therapy. And the reason why this conference is so historical is because it's the first time that all of these pioneers have come together in one place. And when you say pioneers, you mean exactly whom? Uh, some of the pioneers have been Sarah Jane Williams. She is the editor of the Harp Therapy Journal and um, very instrumental in making all of these connections. She's the one that encouraged me to do this um, conference. And Gloria, that you've spoken to before, and Michelle Sell, and Don Estes, all of those are major people. Also, Dr. Ron Price is one of our speakers here. He founded a program called Healing Harps, which is what led me into the realm of harp therapy because I'm the director of the Richmond Public Schools Harp Ensemble. Mm -hmm. And um, what that program is, is it exists within the Richmond City Schools. And we are definitely an inner city school system with all of the problems that plague urban school systems. Mm -hmm. And um, we have over 70 students that play the harp in our school system. Wow. And that's pretty terrific. It's an amazing program. Age-wise, what are the ages? From third grade until 12th grade. Playing the harp. Right. In the inner city schools in Richmond. In Richmond. We're the only program of the kind in the nation. And um, what makes it really unique is, as I mentioned, this Healing Harps program. What happened was in 1985, or 1995, excuse me, uh, one of the students came to school with an article about Healing Harps. And so we decided we were going to take an idea of people being rehabilitated, um, not necessarily you know, that cured, but um, certainly having some very good benefits psychologically,
physically, so forth, from playing the harp that had different kinds of challenges into what we could do in our school system. And that is, I have these fantastic harp students that are middle and high schoolers, and they mentor physically, mentally, and emotionally challenged students that are mainstreamed in the school system, and they are teaching them how to play the harp. Now, that's great. How did you get the harps? I mean, I, I, I don't see inner city kids coming home saying, Dad, I, I want you to buy me a harp. Not a synthesizer, not a boom box, not a bass guitar, but a harp. How did that all come about? Well, that's what's remarkable, too. Um, the program started in the 60s with just five harps and eight students. And it's grown now to have over 45 harps and, as I said, over 70 students. And um, the way it's grown is when there's something really magical happening, something really good that's mm -hmm. making a difference in students' lives, community support comes through, administrative support, and so gradually over the years we've added new instruments. But I must add that none of our harp students currently own harps of their own. The only time they practice is at school. So um, the fact that they're traveling to Europe this year and doing a lot of terrific things of release to CD is remarkable because they don't have their own instruments to practice on. So, um, you know, we're always looking for people that want to fund and help us out with that program. All of you out there should be interested. Uh, as we wrap this up, I, I'd like to say thank you to Linnell for putting all of this together, for inviting uh, eyes to come here and uh, film this. We learned so much today. Uh, we even look forward to coming back maybe to another one of your conferences next year, the second annual, you, you know. Go. And, uh, we'll, and I'm quite sure by then there'll be some new things happening in the harp world. Our hat goes off to you and all the wonderful things that you're doing for the program. I know you're dedicated and committed. Thank you once again. Well, sure. Well, may I add that? Sure. You know, as you see something like this, I'm sure that many of your viewers will be inspired and interested in getting more information. And if they're looking for it, uh, we have a website that's okay. www dot harptherapy dot com and it will list all of the upcoming events including the second international harp therapy conference and certainly we'll also have information about how to get in touch with the people that you've seen today you must come to North Carolina I'd love to. and do some harping <laughs> okay. okay thank you uh, we have one more segment coming your way and uh, it's going to be a little different as well something I know we certainly did. For more information be sure to stay tuned at the end of the program where we're going to give you some information including the website and some telephone numbers.